Hi everyone, my name is Irit and I'm really happy to share with you this tutorial showing you five very easy ways to use your washi tape. I love washi. I have more than probably I'll ever be able to use. And so I really wanted to play with my beautiful, beautiful washi rolls from Altenew and also show you how easy it is to use it. The first technique I'm going to show you is to simply use them as your background. Think of it as pattern paper that already has adhesive on it and is really thin. So especially with certain designs like this one where there's a lot of white, it just looks like it's part of the paper, like the original paper that you stick it on. Now, of course, with the larger washies, you want to be careful that you don't get too many wrinkles, although usually you can really straighten those out, but it's better to just put it on smoothly, as smoothly as possible right from the get-go. And washi is forgiving, so if you mess it up, you can most times lift it without damaging the paper. I would test out because some papers are more delicate and will rip. So if you don't want to risk it, just um, do a little test before you commit to a giant piece of washi. And that's it. The first page I'm doing is simply using the Botanical Rhapsody Gorgeous Washi on almost the entire page. And then I'm just adding a little touch of that gold washi just for that um, accent. I think it looks really nice. And that's it. Super, super easy, super fast. Let's move on to background number two. This one is again really simple. I'm just going to use the dotted washi here as the base for my background. And because I'm using a traveler's notebook, I can wrap it around my page and then also use that extra strip of it on the next page. If you're doing this on a scrapbook layout, then you can still tuck it, but you know, chances are, if, unless you're using both sides of your pattern papers, that this side won't show. So make your own calculations. Personally, I love also the messy look, so I don't mind these uneven edges. But if you want it like super, super clean, then you could just uh, wrap it around and then trim all of the extra edges. And that's it. That's going to be my base to start this page. And I'll have still photos of the finished pages as we go through the tutorial. My third background is a little bit more complicated and very little because it's still super simple. It's just strips of different designs of washi. Now, depending on the design, sometimes when you layer them, they look really, really great together. It's usually when your color schemes and patterns are different. Something like a busy floral over another busy floral might not work so well. But in my case, these rainbow stripes over the dotted simple black and white washi looks really great. You can still see both patterns. And that's it for our first technique of using washi as backgrounds. The second thing we're going to do with these is to use them, I guess, more in a traditional sticky tape kind of way, and that is to create some tip-ins. So tip-ins is basically any element that you add to your notebook or journal, whatever you're working in, and it's usually just attached. That element is attached on one side and you can flip it, which gives you, first of all, an interactive element, which personally I love. I love having those tactile journals that you can discover things and flip through them and they're like hidden gems. So it is a very nice interactive element, but it also allows you to add more elements, more photos, more journaling, maybe hidden journaling, if that's what you prefer. If you don't like how your handwriting looks, which is 
believe me, you're the only one who cares. <laughs> but <laughs> if you don't like it when it shows, then you can add your journaling behind a photo, for example, in the way that I'm showing you here. Now, in this case here, the first example, I'm just going to add the second photo on the other side. So I'm just going to add the photo here, glue it down. You could glue it to your background or you could glue it to your photo, just make sure you have the orientation right and so that you know you can see the uh, photo properly when you lift that tip in and that it's not turned. I hope that makes sense. So this is a really great way of using washi because it's already sticky and you have those pretty patterns. I really, really enjoy using them like this. Probably for these purposes, the kind of smaller widths of washi works better. And then for the backgrounds, it's really easy when you have the large washies, but also if you don't have large washies, you can just do strips. You can cover a whole background or a section of your background with strips of a thinner washi. So you definitely don't need the big ones but they do make things very fast and easy. <laughs> so for my second tip in, which is I guess a little bit more intricate and I'm using that word very, very loosely, I'm going to adhere a photo and then also a little bit of journaling. And I just love the way that it turned out. It's so simple and it's really fun. Now you could do these tip ins also on a scrapbook page but if you keep your layouts in page protectors then you might have to you know either pull the page out to be able to actually flip your tippins or you could strategically cut an area of your page protector out or just create maybe a slit and then uh, slip the tip in through that. So there are ways to also use these kind of interactive elements on scrapbook layouts and page protectors. But of course, in a traveler's notebook, it's really, really easy. And also on a card, you could uh, create such elements. I think it's always fun, right? I mean, all of us are craft and paper lovers, and it's just fun. I really enjoy that. Um, having those interactive elements. So here is my journaling. I typed it. You could uh, handwrite yours or print it, whatever you want. And again, you can see how nice it is that the washi is forgiving because I mess up all the time. And that's really one of the reasons that I love washi because A, it's forgiving and B, even if you kind of stick it down, not perfectly, you can really you see, you can kind of uh, smooth out those wrinkles unless they're really, really huge. But for the most part, you can make it look good even if you messed it up. So I'm just trimming the excess and yeah, that's basically it. It's really easy not having to deal with extra adhesive. So your decorative element is also sticky. I like that. And now I'm just rounding the corners. That's another thing that's great about washi. It works really well with punches and we'll see that again soon. So my washi was a little bit smaller than my photo. Not a problem. I just grabbed another one and I'm going to cover the remaining white areas. And here is my finished tip in there. And yes, I added also a tab, which I just love. I love tabs. Moving on to technique number three. This is probably one of my favorite ones. And I think this one works particularly well with the gorgeous floral washies from Altenew. Basically what we're going to do, we're going to stick down the washies on your paper of choice. You have a lot of flexibility here and you can really choose whichever paper you prefer to fussy cut. Personally, I like something that is thin because I'm not a huge fan of fussy cutting and having thin paper just makes cutting uh, so much easier. And another thing is that most washies are somewhat transparent. 
So you could also decide to go with a white or a cream or even darker papers. Just, you know, test it out and see what works for you. So that's basically it. We stick down a washi piece and then we fussy cut it and voila, we have these beautiful watercolored floral embellishments. If you know me, you know I love florals and especially this style, kind of the loose watercolor ones. So these are always the papers that I hoard. These are always the first uh, die cuts in an ephemera pack that I use up and having a giant roll of washi filled with these flowers is perfect for me because I'm pretty sure I will have enough of these flowers to last me many, many projects. So once it's all uh, fussy cut, you can start decorating your page and this couldn't be simpler. I mean, just look how beautiful that looks with minimum effort. We have on the side there a little bit a strip of that dotted washi just to add a bit more pattern. I do love a polka dot. And then the rest are just these fussy cut flowers. I also fussy cut some of the black and white flowers from the Botanical Rhapsody washi. That also looks great. You can see those in the still shots. But these are just gorgeous. This washi is fantastic. Again, for all the products, check the blog post. And I'm just going to add a couple of sentiments using this beautiful stamp set. I love the flowers here, but for this video, I'm just using the the sayings. And yeah, and I'm going to add my journaling. And then actually, there are going to be more tip-ins on this page. But I already showed you how to do that. So we don't need to go over that again. But again, I'm going to use the tippins there. You can see them to cover my journaling and give me an opportunity to add more photos. And here is that beautiful flower from the Botanical Rhapsody washi, uh, also fussy cut. OK, so going back to what I said, you can totally use punches and create also your own tabs with the washi tape. You want to adhere it first to some paper. Thin is better. It just it's, makes it easier on the punch, but the washi goes through it like butter. I had absolutely no issues. Make sure your punches are kind of sharpened. Uh, I've never tried, but I heard you can punch some aluminum foil and that is supposed to kind of uh, sharpen them. I didn't have any issues. I added some stitching, which acts kind of double duty. I mean, first of all, it looks great, but then it also makes sure that everything stays stuck together. I mean, washi is sticky, but it is meant to be kind of a reusable thing. So the adhesive is not super, super strong. So just to make sure everything stays in place, especially in something so tiny that will be touched and moved around, I added some stitching just to make sure it stays put. Now for our last technique, I'm going to use the gold washi to frame my photos. Now thin washies can be a little bit trickier because uh, many times they don't stay on very well. The adhesive is not really strong, but when I use them on photo paper, the photo paper comes out, I print my photos at home, so it comes out of the printer a little bit tacky. So it worked really well with the washi and I think it just looks so pretty. You can add a bit of stitching just to make sure everything stays put if you're worried. Here are some close-up shots. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Bye.